Hey there, John Morris here, johnmorrisonline.com, and welcome to another episode of The John Morris Show. And in this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to create a custom theme for the WordPress admin. So if you've ever seen one of those plugins or one of those themes that has the back end of WordPress all themed out and kind of tricked out differently and wondered how that was done, then this is the tutorial for you. So be sure to stay tuned. You know, I'm always harping on how important creating content to attract new clients is to you guys. It's how you get your name out there and let people get to know you. It's how you get and keep those people's attention. And it's how you use that attention to get those people to trust you enough to hire you as their developer. In fact, my blog content is the prime mover behind my entire business. Without it, I'd have no business. But I know a lot of you are just starting out or are new to the idea of blogging for your business and aren't sure how to get your blog started. Well, fear no more, because I recently created a blog tutorial where I walk you step by step through starting your blog. From picking your domain name, to setting up your hosting, to installing your blog software, and every little trick that I've learned along the way the last 11 years to make sure you're set up to be successful with it. Now it's a completely free, no email sign up or strings attached blog tutorial that you can find over at johnsbloggingtutorial.com. So go check it out and let's get you blogging and bringing in new clients for your web design business. Head on over to johnsbloggingtutorial.com. All right, so let's just take a quick look over here to the left hand side and you can see that this, if you've visited the back end of WordPress all logged into a WordPress site, you know that this is not how it comes by default, that this box here is a little more narrow and then it has kind of a grayish background, not this light blue type background here. All right, so that's something that we have changed here. If I go ahead and log into this site, then you'll notice I have that same, I have like a darker blue here and kind of a lighter blue over here. Again, not what's there by default in WordPress and this is stuff that I have changed. So I'm gonna show you how to do both the, the admin and the login. Let's go ahead and start with the login. So I'm gonna just go ahead and log out here. And then let me see, let's go to the uh, WP login page. So I'm gonna have to actually type this out, which I wasn't expecting, but that's okay. And that should take us, okay. So here's the login page. So how do we go about editing this? Well, first off, you're going to want to put, create a plugin in WordPress. Now, if you've never created a plugin, that's fine. You know, it's not it's not too overly complicated just to create a plugin so that it can be used. So if we go to and let's go to our window and let's show our file tree for real quick. All right, so what I've done is in my WordPress hierarchy inside plugins, I've created a folder called Awesome Admin, just some name that I made up. And then inside that, I have a file called awesomeadmin.php. So this is kind of the standard structure for a WordPress plugin. So you have your folder name, and then you have a PHP file with the same name. And so that's how WordPress knows that this is the PHP file to read for this particular plugin. Now I've logged in, I've gone into plugins, and I've activated the plugin. You obviously have to make sure the plugin is activated for this to work. Now inside this awesome and actually you'll see here i have a folder called css here which will where my two css files are at so we'll go ahead and close that tree so we can see our code a little bit better let's go ahead and make our code a little bit bigger here so it's a little easier for you to see so hopefully that's that doesn't make it too messed up here and you can see that pretty good all right so to create a plugin we have plugin name it's called awesome admin plugin uri um, this is just the name of my YouTube channel because that's where you're going to want to go to get this tutorial description. It's a dummy plugin author, me version 1.0 author URL is my website. Okay. So this is this, you can just copy this or you just come in here. You're going to get this code. Obviously you can check the description of this video for the link to the source code, but you can just copy this. This is a standard plugin header that you're going to find in pretty much every plugin that's out there. You could also Google WordPress plugin header 
and maybe find, uh, you know, there's some other things that you can add to this, like licensing and other things if you need to do that. But this is what you need ultimately to create the plugin. So you need the folder, you need the PHP file, and you need this header at the top. And so that's what's going to make it show up in your plugin section inside of WordPress. All right, so then outside of that, what I've done is I've just created two simple functions here. So the first one is awesome admin theme style, and the second one is awesome login theme style. Okay, so for the login, then what I'm doing is I'm using WP and QStyle, which is a built-in WordPress function. And the first parameter is essentially the slug or the name of this file. So this is going to be unique for each CSS file that you and Q. And then I'm using this plugin. The, the second parameter for this WP and Q style is the path to the CSS file that I want to and Q. And so in this case, we're using this plugins URL function, which again is a built-in WordPress function. And that allows us to easily find files within our plugin. So plugins URL, you'll see the second parameter here is this file kind of constant. So it does the magic of knowing where you're at. And this is basically going to give you the root of your plugin folder. So this is going to give us our awesome admin folder. From there, I need to go into the CSS folder and then WP login.css. So what this does is this is going to enqueue the style sheet uh, WP login.css and my CSS folder. It's going to load it in into WordPress. Now, in order to, if you've never worked with WordPress, then this may seem a little foreign, but with WordPress, there are hooks that you can hook into. And so these are essentially, uh, it's not exactly what it is, but they're essentially functions that are called uh, throughout WordPress and different parts of WordPress, and you can essentially add callback functions to those functions. So your callback will get called at that point in WordPress. That's a really, really simplified version of what's going on here. But essentially, these hooks are what allow us to, again, hook into WordPress and add our functionality. So in this case, what we're doing is we're just adding a style sheet. So we're using add action and the hook that we're hooking into, the name of it is login in Q scripts. And then we're referencing our callback function here. So awesome login theme style. So our function that we created up here. You can do this inside of a class. There's, you know, there's, it's there, it supports doing this in a, in a class and so forth. So if you want to do it that way, you can, but we're just keeping it simple here. So essentially this is a call, you're, you're attaching this callback function to a hook in WordPress. That's what allows this WP and Q style function to run. And then what it does is it loads this style sheet in the appropriate place in the login page here in this particular case. Now up here for the uh, awesome admin, it's the exact same thing, except we're, you'll notice that the hook we're hooking into is admin in Q scripts. So all we're doing is hooking into the do two different places. If you just wanted to do the admin, you could just use this one. If you just want to do the login, you could just use this one. It's really up to you. I'm just showing you both. Okay, so it's the exact same idea. We're just hooking into a different place. And then in this function, we're calling a different CSS file here, WP admin.css, not WP login.css. All right, so that's kind of the framework of how you get everything loaded. And that's really what you want to want to know how to do here. Now, you know, this isn't this isn't stuff that changes very much. So really, if you have this, you can kind of just copy this structure and then do your editing inside of WP admin and WP login.css files. So if you want to keep it simple, you know, maybe change the name of the uh, the plugin here, maybe change the function names to mirror whatever you change it to, you know, that that's up to you, but uh, you can kind of really keep this framework how it is if you want, and then just edit these CSS files. All right, so for WP login.css, then we just made two kind of simple changes here. The first thing is the body HTML background we set to this light blue color, and then we changed the width of this login bo box to 500 pixels. Now, what you want to change here is really up to you, and how you go about doing it is really just kind of have to do some snooping with your inspector. So that's all I really did. I came in here, saw that the body uh, by default was set to a background of F1, F1 down here. So you can see that's right here. I found that declaration uh, just snooping through the CSS here. 
and then I came in here and I changed it to the blue color I wanted and it overrides it. Same with the width. I know that the ID of login here is what sets the width and so you see originally here the width was set to 320 pixels. If I uncheck that this is what it looks like by default. So I just came into my CSS file and I made a new decoration that overrides the one existing one that's there. So to find what to change in terms of your CSS you just kind of snoop around in here and you inspect, you know, if I want to change the, the color of these links, I'd inspect that. I see, okay, here's the link and I see the co color is set this way. So usually what I do is I just copy all this and come over here and drop that into my CSS file. And then I can edit it accordingly. I can change those colors and so forth. It takes a little bit of back and forth, refreshing and so forth, but you can pretty quickly change the look and feel, especially of this login page, um, with just a little bit of messing around in the CSS file. All right, now if we go ahead and log in, it's the exact same idea for this page here. So uh, if we go over to wpadmin.css, you know, I did some snooping around and, and figured out that the background color, the, the kind of gray color that was there bef before the F1, F1, was set on the HTML tag here. So I just came in and created a new declaration and changed it to this light blue. Again, did some snooping around for the admin menu. Let's go ahead and inspect that. And it looks like right here, admin menu. And again, saw that if we go down a little ways here. I may have gone by it. The background color is set right here. And so again, I just kind of copied all this, dropped it in over here, and then changed the background color to the, what, the color I wanted it to this dark here. You can do that, you know, if you want to change the, the color of this kind of this uh, title right here, you can see, okay, that's H1. You can come over here and see where that color is set. You can see it's set right here wrap h1 h2 so you could just copy this get rid of these other declarations like font size margin font weight if you don't want to change those and then just change the color so actually let's go ahead and come over here and let me drop that in and so what i would do is i would just kind of go like this and get rid of that and then i would change this color to whatever color i wanted it to be save that and that would change my color here so in order to go through and do this, you just kind of snoop around in here and see what it is that you want to change. And that will get you to the point where you can completely think you can completely change the look and feel of this admin area just by doing some CSS decorations. And same thing with the login page. Hey guys, you probably heard me talking about the importance of starting your blog to get new clients. And you may have even taken my tutorial at johnsbloggingtutorial.com. But I want to go further and not only help you get your blog started, but also help you get your first few visitors. You know, I found momentum to be such a huge factor in giving you the motivation to keep going with your blog and your web development career. And I want to give you a shot in the arm and get you off to a running start. Now, I'm blessed to have a large and engaged audience. In fact, my YouTube channel is thriving with nearly 100,000 video views per month and over 18,000 subscribers. Plus, my email list grows every single day and is now currently over 23,000 subscribers, all of which translates into 40,000 plus page views of my website each and every month, which is frankly something I never would have imagined just a few years ago. It truly is amazing, and as I mentioned, it's the secret to success behind my entire business. Well, what if I promoted your website to that audience of mine? I'm confident you would pick up a few new visitors and followers of your own. And I wonder how quickly you could grow your audience. Well, that's what I want to find out. Now, to get the details on this and how I can help, you want to head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash publicity. But you'll need to do it before you start your blog. So head on over to johnmorrisonline.com slash publicity right away and let's get you off to a running start with your blog.